Hey, what's going on everybody? The Seer here with our round 3 Cosmic Crucible matchup. And so far this week, I already faced two opponents with Mephisto, and this is the third one. So out of the four Mephisto players, I faced all three, so this is going to be a pretty fun one, and hopefully I can finally get a W and go at least 1 and 2 and avoid that 0 and 3 setup. Now if you do like this video and you want to support the channel, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at my opponent, C. Taylor. So C. Taylor is about 106 million TC piece. This is going to be about a 22 million power punch up for me, and they have Mephisto actually on defense. The defense that they have is pretty interesting. Let's go ahead, check out the defenses, and see how we're actually going to tackle this opponent. So in stage 1 is the standard Infinity Watch, so I'm not too worried about that. Stage 2, they have Mercs for Money with Dorm, so I do have a pretty good game plan against that one. Stage 3, they actually put Mephisto, Super Scroll, and Darkhold without Morgan Le Fay all together in Stage 3. So I'm going to try and do the Cabal Masters of Evil there. Stage 4, they have Spider Society. Stage 5 is the Full Hive Mind team. In Stage 6, they have an interesting Extreme X-Men with Rogue and North Star, so that's pretty interesting as well. So I do definitely applaud the creativity that they have on the defense. Let's go ahead and get into it. For Stage 1, I'm just going to use what I always use. That's going to be the Eternals, Tangled Web, and Spider-Man Big Time. Depending on the size of the nebula, usually you can get that nice double tap to start this match off, and that's going to save you a bit more efficiency. The Spider-Man Big Time is going to go first, I'm going to use the special on the Gamora. That's going to remove that revive once from her and nebula. For 2099, I'm going to use the ultimate while targeted on the Gamora, so that way I can put the vulnerable on her, and that's going to get some extra damage out there. I'm going to use the ultimate from the Spider Weaver, so I got the 5 charges on her. And now the fun part comes in where we're going to use the Icarus ultimate, and we get the double tap. The Nebula got killed off along with the Gamora. I'm going to use the ultimate from the Cersei, and that's going to do another turn meter rewind. And Spider-Man Big Time is going to use the ultimate as well, since that is an AoE attack. For 2099, I'm going to use the special on the Philo Vell. Even though she has the immunity, I'm looking more at the splash damage between her and Adam Warlock. Spider Weaver, even though she has that charge, I'm still going to use that special. I just want to get that rebound chain along with clearing some native effects and healing. I'm going to use Icarus' special on the Philo Vell, and the assist gets called in to kill her, and that also end up killing the Adam Warlock, so we're looking pretty good right now. Cersei's going to use that special to stun the Adam Warlock, and that gets him killed off. And now we have an easy cleanup on the Moon Dragon. This was a pretty good efficiency hit, I feel, especially considering this is that Infinity Watch. For stage 2, we're going to have some fun and experiment a little bit. We're going to do Apocalypse, the Horseman, and because the enemy does have a dorm over there, we're going to add North Star in here. His ult is able to remove Revive once from all enemies. The plan on this is to have Red Hulk remove two of the Revive onces, and North Star should be able to clear out the rest of them, just to ensure that I am making him a Skirmisher Blue 4 for this matchup. And as far as the punch-up goes, this is about 700k, so it's a decent sized punch-up as well. So Red Hulk will be going first here. Just to make sure I don't hit that Old Man Logan, I'm just going to do the special on the Deadpool. That's going to remove that revive once from Deadpool and Pandapool. Apocalypse is up. I'm going to use the ultimate, and I'm going to stay targeted on the Dorm. That way the Striker attack is going to hit the Dorm as well. I didn't push the Pandapool, so I'm able to do that Falcon Punch into the Old Man Logan, so he's gone. Morgan's going to use the ultimate targeted on the Dorm, and here... I'm able to use North Star's ultimate, and that was able to clear that revive once from the Dakin, who I wasn't able to clear at the start of this matchup. 
Now it's a very easy cleanup. I'm going to use Archangel's ultimate onto the Dakin. Apocalypse is going to special into Dakin, gets the ISO attack, and kills him. Now we just have to kill the Panda Bull, and hopefully he doesn't come back with his percent chance to revive. And between Morgan and Red Hulk, I was able to take him out. There was no revive on him, so that was a very efficient kill for this team. For stage 3, we're going to go in with that Cabal, Kang, and Titania. Because they have Super Scroll and Mephisto here, I have to use this team, even if it was just Mephisto. So, theoretically, it would have been better for him to split the Mephisto and the Super Scroll up. That way, he'd have to pick and choose and try to find a different way to take out the Super Scroll. So, when you're going against the Mephisto on defense, you do want to go all in on him. Titania's going to go first, and I'm going to use the special. I want to try to get those positive effects stripped off of him. For Kang's turn, I was trying to decide the best play. If it was better to do the basic into him, or if I want to try to gamble a little bit and maybe hit somebody with a vulnerable and use the special. I did opt to go for the heartless and use the special, so that way I can get a double tap on him and I still get that hit on the Mephisto. So the Iron Patriot's up next, I'm going to use the special, and I'm going to stay targeted on that Mephisto, and that calls the Assistant, so I get an extra hit on him. So here it was looking a little dicey for me. For Namath's turn though, I was able to do the ultimate that basically just cleared the field. Leaders up, I do the special into the Mephisto, and I do almost get the kill right there, so he's kind of hanging on by a thread. Because of the turn meter, I did opt to use Titania's ultimate into the Super Scroll instead of trying to kill that Mephisto right there. Namor's up, I do the special into the Super Scroll that does kill the Mephisto, and I'm able to get the kill on the Super Scroll as well. So this went fairly well, and I was able to take out a massive team with this. For stage 4, we're going to use New Warriors Lizard into the full Spider Society team. Initially when I went in here, I did see there was a counter where the full New Warriors worked. I'm like, well, I'll just throw Lizard in, see how that works. I had a brain fart moment, forgetting that the Spider-Man Pivitra basically is a pretty strong counter against the New Warriors team. So this doesn't go well, but I still want to show what this attack looked like and why the Spider-Man Pivitra is such a strong counter against the New Warriors. So for the start of this matchup, the Spider-Man Warrior will be going first and he does his ultimate. The evades that's on those three characters are actually phantom buffs. The Spider-Man Pavitra on spawn throws out the two vulnerables and that basically peels away the evades on those characters, making it to where those are phantom. The Lizard ends up going, taking away all their buffs, which is great. However, then the Spider-Man Pavitra goes and we're already very low health on the Death Pool and the Firestar and Firestar bleeds out, so the match is pretty much over right here because I can't do the ultimate to do the rewinds and start controlling the Spider Society team. So this matchup does not go well at all. Pretty much if you have the Spider Society team on there, just don't use your New Warriors, it's not worth the risk. So because of the New Warriors Lizard not working, I had to make a pivot on my attack teams. For stage 4, we're now going to use the Seeker Defenders with Nova, and we're going to have to use that New Warriors team elsewhere. So let's go ahead and see how the Seeker Defenders do against the Spider Society. So again, the Spider Noir is going to be going first because of the amount of buffs that we have on our side. The Ms. Morpher Hard Light's up next. I'm going to end up selecting the Penny and doing the Ultimate, so I can try to rewind the Penny and Spider-Man Pavitra. Nova's going to use the Special to try to get the stun on the Penny and that did get resisted. For Ghost Rider Robbie, I'm going to target the Peter B. Parker and use the Special, so that way I can get the ability block on him. And I'm going to follow that up by doing the Black Cat Special to get the Trauma Stun on the Penny, and that does end up landing. Photon's up, and I'm going to use the Special on the Penny, so that way I can get the Blinds on the Spider-Man Pavitra and the Spider-Man War. 
For Robbie's turn, I'm going to use the ultimate. That's going to put a lot of bleeds out on the other side of the field, and that's also going to fill his speed bar up fairly high to where he's going to have a turn coming up fairly quick. So unfortunately, the Nova did end up bleeding out right there, but Black Cat is back up. I'm going to use the ultimate to take all those buffs away from the Ghost Spider, and they're all peppered in bleeds right now, so I'm feeling fairly good about this matchup. The Ghost Rider Robbie was able to take out the Spider-Man, Pavitra, and the Penny. I'm losing a little bit of efficiency here, but it's looking like a pretty good one-shot as far as an uh, option goes. Ms. Marvel highlights back up. I'm going to use the special on the Peter B. Parker, and that ends up getting another taunt to help protect my characters. Photon ends up doing the ultimate. There were evades on the other side, but I at least got to strip the evades off of the other team. Black Cat was able to finish off the Peter B. Parker. Now I just have to worry about the Ghost Spider and the Spider-Man War, which Robbie was able to take out with the special. So for stage 5, I'm going to attempt to use the new warrior's lizard into the full hive mind team. The lizard should be able to go first, drip a lot of buffs out there, and I'm hoping that I can try to get a permakill from the Gwenpool ultimate. That's going to be the goal for this type of matchup. So because of the Spider-Verse characters on the other side of the field, the lizard does go first, and I use the ultimate. Gwenpool follows that up by doing the special, and I stay targeted on the Boy Knight. I do have my targeting off on this matchup. I end up doing Firestar's ultimate into the Void Knight and spreading from the Void Knight to the Venom and Gwenom. What I should be doing here is actually trying to focus down the Carnage along with the Void Knight. So I would have been wanting to target Venom this whole time. And right here I attempt to do Gwenpool's ultimate to get those permakills that I mentioned earlier in this matchup. I end up not getting any of them. And Red Goblin ends up doing the ultimate to bring those nade effects that's not under trauma, throwing it back at us, and that starts to knock us in the red to where Carnage and the Hive Mind starts getting that speed boost. So I'm going to end up backing out here and I'm going to have to go in with a different team to try to take this out now. So instead of doing the New Warriors Lizard, I'm just going to do the full New Warriors team. The reason for that is Dagger is still able to pump out a lot of damage, and I'm hoping that will kind of be the deciding factor in me getting the Hive Mind team low enough to where I can try to get that permit kill with the Gwenpool Ultimate. So let's see how this one ends up going. So for this matchup, Gwenpool gets to go first. The reason for that is the New Warriors get a lot of speed when you have the full team with them. So I'm able to try to get ahead of the ultimate from the Void Knight. So Gwenpool's going to do the special on the Venom. Firestar's going to do the ultimate on the Venom. That's going to end up doing a turn rewind to Carnage, Venom, and the Void Knight. Deathpool's going to spread those negative effects with this special. And I'm just trying to stay on that Venom so that way you can try to keep the Carnage and the Void Knight kind of low enough. On Dagger's turn, I actually opt to do the basic. I didn't want to do the special and have the chance to actually kill the Carnage when I wasn't prepared to. Gwenpool does that ultimate, and that was able to get rid of the Carnage and the Venom, and I got one life actually off of the Red Goblin. Because of the safeguard that's on the New Warriors, the Void Knight ultimate didn't do anything. Red Goblin does the ultimate. Even if we do start to get knocked in that red, we don't have to worry about that threat of Carnage. So Carnage was definitely a key that I messed up in the first one, but I think this one works better as far as the counter goes because I'm able to actually get a little bit more control and ahead of that Void Knight ultimate. And right here I was able to use that Deathpool ultimate. That was able to take care of the Red Goblin. The Dagger ultimate was able to take care of the Void Knight and it's a very easy cleanup from there on the Gwenom. This team worked a whole lot better and actually surprised me as far as how well they did in the stage 5, but it definitely has to do with the positioning.
For stage 6, I'm going to use a combination of Superior 6 and Sinister 6 members. Now, K-Dog Forever commented on one of my YouTube videos saying that he always uses Vulture and Mysterio with the Superior 6, like this team here, against the Extreme X-Men, and he has a lot of success and doesn't usually fail any of the matchups. He commented on this after I had a failed attack, I think it was like my round 1 or round 2 video, and I definitely want to give a callback to this. Now, I haven't really used Mysterio with the Superior 6 team since last season, I believe, when they had the boost, and I really enjoyed it. And I can see how this would work because of the blinds and the control that Mysterio brings, along with turning off the immunity. So let's see how this one goes. For the start of this matchup, Vulture is going to go first, and I do have an opportunity to ult first, which I decide to do, that we can try to peel off all the evades on the other side of the field. Green Goblin Classic is up next. I'm going to target the Forge and do the ultimate, because he is a striker, and that will get me the ISO attack on him as well. For Craven's turn, I end up targeting the Rogue and do the special so I can get the ability block on her. Doc Ock, I end up doing the ultimate here so that way you can extend all those negative effects including that ability block that's on Rogue. Mysterio's turn here, I do end up making a mistake. I end up doing the special so I can put blinds on everybody. Gambit's going to ult on turn 1 and that is unavoidable. Now looking back at this footage as I'm doing the recording of this, I believe the correct play would have been to use Craven's special on Gambit and then use Mysterio's special on Rogue. That would have allowed the ability block to be both on Rogue and Gambit and that would avoid the ultimate that we just took. For Green Goblin Classic's turn, I end up doing the special on the Rogue so that we can get that nice turn made to rewind on her. Craven ends up doing the ultimate, and that is able to take off some more of those evades that end up coming up on the Extreme X-Men. For Vulture, I end up targeting the Forge into the basic, and that does end up taking the Forge out. For Shocker's turn, I do end up doing the special, so now I do have offense up on everybody. Vulture ends up doing that ultimate again to peel those negative effects off. Shocker's back up, I end up doing the ultimate on the Gambit so that way you can do a turn meter rewind on him and the Nightcrawler. For Mysterious turn, I do end up doing the ultimate that ends up putting heal block out on everybody and does pretty good damage to the entire team. Green Goblin Classic is back up, I'm going to target the Nightcrawler and do the specials and that does end up killing him. For Vulture's turn, I do the basic and that ends up taking care of the Gambit. Now I just have to worry about the Rogue. This was a very good easy counter even with the mistakes that I ended up making. I'm definitely going to be doing this combo a lot more because my Mysterio is built up and I really do enjoy using them. So thank you for that advice again K-Dog. And it looks like it won, even though I did drop two matches. My opponent looks like they dropped four matches, so the final score, my opponent got 48,551. I got 49,359. So that was a really good matchup. I felt really good about all the attacks that I did, except for that new Warriors attempt that I did in Stage 4. I just have to keep in mind myself that I don't want to use that new Warriors into that Spider Society team. It never comes out clean for me at all. Also discovering that the new warriors did that well against the hive mind on that big of a punch up, I'm really happy about that. This is also the first Mephisto that it defeated that was on defense, so I'm really happy about that accomplishment as well. Overall, I'm really happy about this match that I did, even if I end up losing after dropping the two matches, I would have been fine with that. I was just really happy with the way that I approached my opponent today. So, C. Taylor, you did an awesome job. I look forward to having a rematch against you, and hopefully we can do that in the near future. Let's go ahead, though, and check out the defenses to see what happened. In Stage 1, I got an 8361. This is usually the average amount of points that I get using this team into the Infinity Watch. That's why I prefer to use this over the Pegasus team, personally. 
For stage 2, I was really happy with the way this one played out. The North Star being able to remove the revive once from the back end definitely helped out as far as the efficiency went and knowing that he's a good option if I see any dorms out there, I really like that. This one got me at 83.64. For stage 3, this was the Mephisto Super Scroll Room. This got me at 8365. I was really happy with how this played out. I was a little worried there at the beginning when the Mephisto started taking his turns because that was the first time I actually saw Mephisto in action in Cosmic Crucible. But this team worked great, and I'm really happy that I had them built up to be able to use them. Stage 4 was the draft attack that I ended up doing because I brought the New Warriors Lizard into that Spider Society. I backed out, went back in with the uh, Secret Defenders Nova. Nova, he did the stun, but otherwise he didn't really do too much for this matchup. This one got me a 79.55. Stage 5 was the other dropped attack that I ended up having. That's where I went in with the New Warriors Lizard, and I ended up backing out, went back in with the full New Warriors, and I do feel that the Dagger actually brings more to the table in this matchup than Lizard does. The New Warriors are able to go faster and actually get some control out there. Also, having the correct target priority definitely helped in this one. This got me a 79.64, which is actually a really good efficiency score. Stage 6 was the Sinister and Superior 6 combination team into that extreme X-Men with Rogue and Northstar. I got an 83.50 on here, so the efficiency wasn't the best. However, if this was a different room, I can definitely see this being better than the full Superior 6 or the Superior 6 with Vulture. Adding the Mysterio definitely changes the dynamic of this matchup, and I do like that. As far as my defense goes, my opponent used the full Masters of Evil team into my Infinity Watch. This got them at 83.55. For Stage 2, my opponent initially tried the new Warriors into my Marks for Money with Nightcrawler and Zami Juggernaut. They did have to back out on that, then they decided to go back in with Apocalypse with New Warriors, which I found pretty interesting. This ended up getting them a 79.52 for this one. For Stage 3, they ended up using the Tangled Web Eternals Nova. This was into my Out of Time with Dorm team. This got them at 83.65, so a pretty good efficiency score. Stage 4 it looks like they really struggled with this one. They initially went in with the Superior 6 with Spider-Man Big Time. They end up going in after that with a Sinister Superior 6 Gamma team with a Zombie Juggernaut. That ended up failing as well. And then they kind of went in with a mishmash of leftovers. This got them at 75-47. So I was really happy this defense held up for me. For stage 5, they end up using their Cabal with Zemo and Emma Frost. This was into my Super Scroll Hive Mind team. This got them at 8366, which kind of is the point. I'm trying to pull Cabal over here so they can't use it on my Mercs for Money team. And for stage 6, they went in with a full Seeker Defenders team into my full Spider Society. That ended up failing, so they backed out, went back in. This ended up getting them at 7966. So for this week, I did end up going 1 and 2. It's definitely not what I wanted, but it was kind of what I was expecting when I saw how many Mephistos were in here. Now that I got my first victory against a Mephisto, and I know how I stack up against the opponents that had Mephisto, I do feel a lot better about myself when I start getting these matches. I definitely don't think it's going to be an auto loss like my initial thoughts when I got put into this bracket with all these good players and having Mephisto because it definitely is a game changer. However, knowing that I was able to get some defensive victories if I trusted my defense and actually pick and choose the correct matches and play smart, I know I can get the victory. So that definitely makes me feel a lot better about myself. This week was a great learning experience for me and I was really excited to actually get put into this bracket now that the week is over. I hope that you all enjoyed this week as well of Cosmic Crucible, but if you did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm really pushing towards that 1000 subs, I'm getting so close to it, and the channel is growing so much faster than I would have ever expected. So thank you everybody who has been supporting me on this journey, and let's go ahead and hit that goal. Until next time, have a wonderful rest of the day.